So you can see I've basted shut the legs and I've also basted shut the arms and I'm now ready to attach the four limbs and the top knot to the front piece of the body. And so I'm going to start with the top knot. For the top knot I'm going to stitch it upside down very close to the edge in the center of the head. I'm also going to position the arms. The arms get positioned so that the top corner of the arm rests on the fabric where the body fabric meets the muslin for the head. And I'm again just going to stitch very close to the edge to secure the arm in place. Make sure when you baste the legs the toe is pointing towards the face rather than up away from the face. If it's pa uh, pointing up away from the face, the legs will be attached backwards. And now I have all of the limbs attached. I'm ready to attach the back of the body to the front of the body. So what I've done is now that I've attached the limbs and the top knot to the front side of the body, I've taken the back side of the head and the body and I've put it right side together to the front side and I've pinned it all the way around the head making sure to match up the edges of the hair and also the edges of the body fabric. So what I want to do is I want to start sewing and I want the bottom edges the bottom corners to line up. So I've temporarily flipped the leg, the right leg, up into the body and I folded the right arm across the body so that when I start sewing that corner is lined up very nicely. Um, once I start sewing, again I'm using a 1.5 or 1.6 length stitch, a very small stitch because this will be stuffed. And I'm going to start along that edge again staying about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. You may, may be able to be a little more generous, uh, but not much, right around a quarter inch. So once you get that started, once you're a couple inches into the seam, then I would take that leg out of I, wouldn't, I would untuck it so it's not in the way and that allows the neck to lie flat again so that it's nicely lined up as you go around the top of the head. Once you get to the neck on the other side of the body, take the other arm and flip it in. You might want to have it come out of the body gap just so that it doesn't press against the side. So I've taken the pins out of the head, uh, I've sewed all the way around from the bottom right corner of the body all the way to the top and down to the bottom left. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck the legs up into the body so all four limbs, arms and legs are inside the body so the legs go right through the neck opening into the head. and that will allow me to stitch closed the bottom part of the body. And again, because of the legs being stuffed fairly firmly, we'll have to put quite a bit of pressure on as it goes underneath the presser foot. I give myself a little more room here. Instead of a quarter of an inch, I usually do just under half of an inch for the seam. So very gently through the opening of the back that we left open in one of the first steps, pull each of the legs out, then pull the arms out, 
and then gently work on turning the head right side out. So I've got my doll turned right side out. You can see that uh, her hair lines up and the body pieces line up. And then now what I'm going to do is through the back opening that we left, I'm going to stuff her. Starting from the top of the head, I'm going to stuff her quite firmly until I work my way down to the bottom of the body. I use bigger tufts of fiber fill for this, but I do still fluff it up a little bit before I put it in just so that I can avoid any lumps. So I've finished stuffing the doll and you can see I've stuffed her fairly firmly, not as firm as the arms and the legs, but fairly firmly, and the back gap needs to be closed up. So I've taken a needle and thread and a corresponding color for the body, so I'll keep going until this gap is closed. To make the tutu, I've taken my two pieces of tulle that are 60 inches by 7 inches, 60 inches long by 7 inches wide, and I've placed them one on top of each other, and I've centered it using a measuring tape. I've I've looked to see where the needle needs to be to be halfway through. I want the seam directly down the center of those two pieces, and so I kind of just get a uh, visual for where that is on my machine. It happens to line up with this crack in my machine here and so I usually just let the tool ride along that edge and that keeps me centered. And what I'm going to do is without back stitching I'm going to do a seam all the way down the 60 inches of the tool securing the two pieces of tool together and also giving me a seam I can use to gather it. At the end, again, don't backstitch. Raise the presser foot and pull the tool out and give yourself a little bit of thread to work with together. So to gather the skirt, you want to take one of the threads from the end. I usually take the one that's on top and you want to just gently pull to gather the tool until you have your tool gathered into a five inch long section. Once you get all the way to one end, you can go ahead and tie those threads in a knot to keep it from slipping. And then finish gathering from the other side. So if I measure, I have five inches from one side to the other that's been gathered and I'm going to tie a knot in the second side to secure it in place. So I have my five inch long gathered section of tulle and I've also snipped the loose threads on the ends to clean it up a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is making sure it's evenly gathered. I'm going to take a length of ribbon that's 20 inches long and I'm going to find the center of that length of ribbon. And again, I'm using a accent color instead of a matching color. It would be up to you. You could use purple if you'd like. And I'm going to match up the approximate center of that tulle skirt with the center of the ribbon. And I'm just going to hold it in place. Then I'm going to choose a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine and make it just about the right width to go from one side of the ribbon to the other side of the ribbon. And I'm going to zigzag that ribbon all the way down the center seam of that tulle skirt. So here I have my skirt with the ribbon attached and I'm going to put the ribbon side against the doll body and the other side facing outwards to allow the skirt to fold outwards easier. So tie that ribbon around the waist, tying it fairly tight.
you could do a double knot if you'd like. And then separate the layers of tulle. And there we've created the tutu for the ballerina. For the shoes, again, you need a 20 inch piece of ribbon and you're going to find the middle of that piece of ribbon. And you take a shoe piece and just along the top, you wanna to align the middle of the ribbon with the middle of the shoe piece and then stitch that across the top. If you're using a thicker ribbon, I would do one stitch along the top of the ribbon and one along the bottom, but this is fairly thin, so I'll just do one seam. After the ribbon has been attached to the shoe, you want to fold the shoe over so that the ribbon is on the inside and you're going to stitch from the toe all the way to where the heel fold begins. So I trim quite a bit when I do the shoes. I'll trim the corner off of the front so that it doesn't stick up through the front of the shoe. And I'll also trim excess felt from around the edge of that seam so that it turns right side out nicely. So when you turn it right side out and push out the toe, that is what your shoe or your ballet slipper is going to look like. That fits nicely onto the ballerina doll's uh, foot. And then I'll trim the ends of the ribbon to the desired length. So I don't usually leave them too long. I usually cut them off at about an inch or an inch and a half. You can also use a product like Fray Check on the ends of the ribbon to prevent them from fraying. And I do that on the ribbon that's on the tutu. And I also do that on the ribbon that I will tie on the top knot. The final step to creating our doll is to tie a ribbon around her top knot and so I take, again, maybe about a 15 to 20 inch length of ribbon from the back, bring it around to the front and tie it in a knot. And then tie a bow. And there you have our ballerina.